we are making white balsamic rosemary jelly today. In the photo in the book, it is put on top of pork chops. That looks amazing. I also plan on trying it on top of chicken as well, and maybe some other things too. Hey everybody, welcome to the Hamakua Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany, and today we are doing water bath canning 101. But really, it's a recipe as well, so even if you're already familiar with water bath canning, you can still watch this video and you can still benefit from this awesome recipe. I'm getting today's recipe out of the all new ball book of canning and preserving. There is a link for this down below. This recipe makes roughly five half pint jars. It is not suggested that you double jelly recipes because it could mess up the set of your jelly and then you'll have a jelly that's kind of a weird texture and maybe not so safe either. Why is it white? Oh, white. I didn't read that. Okay, well, I messed up. I did not read properly. <laughs> I apparently was maybe just reading through it too fast and I did not read the word white balsamic. So, in today's recipe, I'm going to refer to this as white balsamic rosemary jelly, even though when I just now made it, I made it with dark balsamic vinegar. Let me check on this. I've got some Googling to do. Hold on. Um, I'm in the middle of making a video and I screwed up. The acidity level of that is between four and 7%. Dark balsamic vinegar and it will be fine. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, as long as it's 5%. Okay, water bath canning 101. Read your recipe well before you get started. I'm not kidding you guys. I went through and I made this already, not reading the word white, but I have done my research now. I do know that it is safe. I don't have to throw it away. It'll be all right. And the reason that I know that is because I Googled it. I figured out the acidity level that was expected in the white balsamic vinegar. And I checked the back of my bottle of the regular vinegar, or regular balsamic vinegar that I used and it's a 6% acidity. So five, 6% acidity is fine for water bath canning. So we're in the clear. It was not a fatal mistake for our recipe. And I consulted with a good friend of mine who is a master food preserver. And she assured me that because of the acidity levels and the research that I already pulled up on the internet is correct. I never trust the internet, but I do trust my friend. Back to it, let's get started. Grab a stock pot that's not too small, but not gigantic. Into your stock pot, combine two and a half cups of 100% apple juice. Three quarters cup of white balsamic vinegar. Four tablespoons of ball plastic pectin. and one four inch sprig of fresh rosemary. Can you use dried instead, you might ask? No, the acidity level will change. When a recipe calls for fresh herbs, you need to use fresh. If it calls for dry, use dry. You can change which dried ones you're using. So if you wanted to make a basil jelly instead of rosemary and it were dry, then you could exchange them. But you cannot exchange fresh and dry herbs in the same recipe because that's not how the food testing professionals have tested it. And so therefore we don't really know. But if you're not a big fan of rosemary, you can still make this recipe with other fresh herbs. Tarragon, basil, thyme. Bring this mixture up to a full rolling boil that can't be stirred down on a medium high heat. Once it is at a full boil, 
add three and one third cups of sugar. Stir in your sugar until it is dissolved. Return this mixture to a full rolling boil. Continue to stir it for one full minute on a very hard boil. Stirring constantly. Then remove it from the heat. Take out the sprig of rosemary and skim off the foam if necessary. Ladle your hot jelly into your half pint jars. Here is where you want to pay attention. Well, you always want to be paying attention during this. It's a very quick recipe and it can go south pretty quickly, but make sure that you're leaving one quarter inch headspace. For example, this is clearly not jelly, but right here on the edge, at the bottom of this thread right here is a one inch headspace. That's one inch from here to the top of the jar. On the bottom of this thread is half of an inch headspace. And if you go up to right here, this is a quarter inch. Knowing where your liquid line is according to the top of your jar is very, very important. So make sure that you're following your recipe each and every time. If you accidentally put in a little too much, scoop it out with a spoon. If you don't have enough, put a little more in. Just wait until you get it just right. Wipe down the rims of your jar with white distilled vinegar. This is going to help cut through the sugar or anything else that might be on your rim that could prevent your lid from sealing to your jar. Then you can put on your lids and your rings fingertip tight. Don't crank it on there just enough where it's snug but not too tight, you know what I mean? Example, I usually use just these three fingers. I wanna get it tight, but I'm not using my wrist. I'm not cranking it down. I'm just using these three to go like that, and that's about how much you want it to be. If you have it too loose, your lid's gonna wobble. If you have it too tight, it's going to suction down and buckle. You don't want that. You've worked too hard at this point to have that happen. Now you can put your jars into your hot water canner. You want to make sure that the water in your canner is already hot at this point. The reason for that is because the jelly inside your jars is hot. The jar, therefore, is also hot. So if you were to take a hot jar with hot jelly and put it into cold water, you're gonna have a sudden change in temperature and that could break your jar. We also wanna avoid that. If you were canning something that was cold or room temperature, that would be different. Then you could start off with cold or room temperature water and then they would come up to temperature together at the same time. But obviously that's not the case when you're dealing with hot jelly. Make sure that the water level in your canner is one to two inches above the rim of your jars. The lid, the lid of your jars. It can't be below it. And really you're just wasting your time if it's way above it. So one to two inches is perfect. If you underestimate how much water you preheated, just go ahead and add a little more hot water. Put on your lid and wait for it to come up to a full rolling boil. Once it is full rolling, once it is at a full rolling boil, you can set your timer for 10 minutes, adjusting for altitude. Generally speaking, when you are below 1,000 feet elevation, you will go with whatever the approved recipe recommends for timing. If you're above 1,000 feet, the general rule of thumb is to add five minutes. 
After your 10 minutes is up, you can turn off your heat and take off your lid. Don't take your jars out right away. We're gonna go back to that sudden temperature change here. You don't want to introduce the cold atmosphere to your really hot jars all at once. So what I find works out best is to take off the lid, walk away for five to 10 minutes, and then come out and take your jars out. When you take your jars out of your canner, do be cautious of your countertops as well. Your jars are still smoking hot. Place them on a towel or a cutting board or something else to protect your countertops and to protect your jars. You can leave them out on the counter for 24 hours. Don't jostle them around, don't mess with them, just leave them there. After that 24 hours, you're gonna go ahead and check, make sure that they're all sealed up. Don't wait too long after that 24 hours because if the seal is not sealed, you don't want your food to spoil. You wanna put it in the refrigerator. But as long as everything went according to plan, your jars should be nice and tight. So then you can go ahead and wash your jars, label them, and put them up on your pantry shelf. and then you're done. Just keep it there on your pantry shelf until you're ready to use your product, which in this case is a meat marinade, and I can't wait to give it a try. Marinade, dressing, I don't know. It's technically a jelly, but I think it's gonna go best on meat products. And that's gonna do it for today, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Hamakua Homestead. I'll see you again soon.